What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, aren't subscribed, make sure and click the subscribe button, like, comment, listeners think about the episode. If there's a particular guest topic or a follow-up question that you have on the podcast, we're always checking on there and love to be able to take your guys' suggestions and then be able to work them into future episodes or make it a standalone episode as well if we get enough requests for it. Today, I'm going to be joined by a listener. His name's Larry, and I've chatted with him for a year, a couple of years, um, about the process of buying a diesel truck. And um, he had messaged us recently and said, hey, I finally found the truck. Um, I'm picking it up here this week. I'm super excited. So I thought it'd be great to have him on to talk about his journey from not owning a diesel truck and then spending his time researching Power Strokes, Cummins, Duramaxes, different year ranges, fitting that into the plan that he has to use the truck um, you know, for everyday use or if he's building something for power and be able to get some insights so that you guys, if you're out there and you're in the same position, you're looking to get your first diesel truck, you have some some tips and some things that worked for his particular um, you know, search and, and buying decision. Before we get to it, though, I want to remind you, our friends over at Kershaw Knives have a 20% off site wide code for you. If you go to Kershaw dot kaiusa.com use code 23 diesel 20 for 20 percent off site wide there's a ton of quality knives that are designed to really meet any budget and any use so if you need something for edc or hunting fishing around the job site or on the house they've definitely got you covered their duralock models are a new release that they have which the opening mechanism it, the way that it functions it's super smooth keeps your fingers away from the blade when you open and close it and they have a bunch of designs for blade shape, blades made out of D2 steel, and then also different handle designs and shapes to be able to maximize um, you know, comfort in the way that it, it fits um, you know, in your pocket if it's something that you're going to everyday carry. So definitely make sure, head on over, check them out. Use code 23diesel20 if you're in the market. All right, let's get to today's podcast with a podcast listener named Larry and his personal journey to get his first diesel truck, the th- trucks that he looked at, why he shied away from some why he looked at others really hard and how he ended up making the decision that he did for his very first diesel. Larry, welcome to the Diesel Podcast. I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. Um, I've had uh, fun over the, uh, I guess it could be years or months. I know definitely you've been looking for trucks for a long time and you know, saying, hey, what do you think about this one? Or you um, talked about this, this other truck on the podcast. I know a lot of people are in that same position where we're interested in either maybe a particular brand or we're open to all of them and then which year range should we get so i'm looking forward to hearing your experiences and things you learned along the way of finding the right truck for you yeah absolutely thank you for having me thank you for putting in the work and uh doing all this and talking to all these amazing people um that definitely helps a lot when you have reference points to go to and uh appreciate you letting me bothering you on a uh, messenger <laughs> like, what about this what about this <laughs> not a lot of diesel buddies around here so you know just have to like reach out via internet the people who have like a passion for it and i'm of course trying to get the right thing so helps a lot well that's that's why we do the podcast is really to just help educate or you know get people out there thinking about about different things i've learned a ton over the years um i mentioned before the podcast like if i was looking for an older truck you know which brand which year range i've learned so much in just talking with shop owners people who own them you know, and things like that. It's, it's incredibly helpful. So I wanted to ask you, you know, as far as diesel, have you owned diesel trucks before? Is this your first one? And then if so, was there a particular brand that you really focused in on when you were looking for one to purchase? Nah, this will be my first one. Uh, actually, um, like you said, I've been looking at them for a while and so indecisive. I've, I've went to pull the trigger at least 20 times. Um, and just haven't. And, uh, I am. Um, I actually, what started me out even thinking about diesel is um, when I had a 1500, well, I had two 1500s break down on me, like just like transmissions every that was pulling way more than I should have with them. And I was like, <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to get a 2500, you know, something heavy duty. Had no idea what I was doing. So I went and got a, it was a 2004 uh, Ram 2500. Um, and, uh, and figured out after that, like figured out what the generations are and this and that. And of course it had the five, seven Hemi in it. And I was like, man, this thing is awesome. Like, I love this thing. And, uh, right around that time we like, we moved to, we moved out of like, kind of like the city into like the countryside, you would say, yeah. like we moved into uh, 
uh, Lancaster County. And it's funny because there's a thing up here. It's called Buck Motorsports. And they have like the sled pulling and all that stuff. So here I am with this gas 2500. And we're like, let's check that out. So I go there and I'm like, what, what are these things? <laughs> like, what is this world of these amazing, like they sound like jets and they're just completely awesome. And uh, I, that's when I start like diving into stuff and like checking out podcasts that came on yours. I was looking at videos and I was like, ah, I want a diesel. Like I need that Cummins now, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so but yeah, that's what that gas truck, that 2,500 is like what got me like, I'm like, all right, I, I, you know, you have the outside. Like I want, I want the, the pulling power. Like I want that gas mileage. Like, <laughs> so, but yeah. And then I just started looking, I think, I think I got hooked on the Rams and then I got like, without even knowing all the different types, like I was, I got hooked on like, uh, the Cummins for sure. Yeah. So so many stories my my own started that way like that was the first uh the first gas truck that i bought um it was an 04 and it was in 2004 and they were still kind of new then like i remember the heavy commercials and so now i go to the dodge dealer and i bought it and then yeah. it was like a year maybe a year later somebody had the same truck but a 2500 with a cummins and an auto in it and i don't remember if they had like a smarty or a bully dog. I don't remember what it was, but I'm like, man, this is totally different than my truck. Why didn't I buy that one? And it just kind of started the whole process of, of jumping into it. And I know there's a lot of listeners out there where they, they know about Cummins. Like once you, once you start to get into, okay, what's a Duramax power stroke Cummins and you talk to people, um, Cummins is the, the big one, you know, that a lot of people will tell you, Hey, look at that one did you look for a particular generation? Like, did you look back to first gen, second gens, or, or did you really like the third? And that, that was the one that grabbed your attention. So I think the third is what grabbed my attention. And, uh, I didn't even know, I didn't even really know until you guys, uh, you interviewed the guys from, uh, fleece performance. And I was like, wait, there's a six sevens Cummins. Like, what is that? Like, he was like talking about like the separation difference with that, like half, you know, yeah. I was like, I thought all the dirt third gens were just five nines at the time. You know, I didn't know what, I didn't know what common rail or this or that was. So, um, yeah, it was like, I started really looking, I was like, I pretty much just want my truck with a Cummins in it. Like, and then you go, you even go into like, can I swap a Cummins into this? And it's yeah. like, people are like, dude, don't like the headache, just go get something else. <laughs> right. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So yeah, the third gen, now I like them all. Like there's knowing what I know now with the information like oh my gosh like even ford with the six sevens i i love the six o's too i just don't have like i'm a little weary even though it's funny because people talk about how bad the six o's are but i see them or like 2003 2006 2000, that like they're all still pulling stuff around my area like working like i see 15 six o's a day like doing work and i'm like like how bad could you know what i mean like they yeah. did something right to that like after after they put some time and money into it like that thing still i know that thing has three hundred thousand miles on it it looks like it's about to fall apart from the outside but it sounds amazing pulling that trailer up the road you know <laughs> so like you know they're they're great and i fell in love with those and i love i like the lml's a lot like um and everything like that but yeah i think like that five nine third gen is uh really uh that's the one i was like that was the first one that i was like drawn to yeah so well, well they combine so much because the styling is still cool in its own yeah. way whether it's 03 to 05 or 06 07s but then you still have the benefits of common rail injection there's a ton mm -hmm. of solutions for transmissions or upgraded clutches and parts and there's just so much that's still available for them and that was that's what was really cool with the questions you would ask because I knew you were trying to gather information. You wanted to learn and you wanted to know, Hey, can you direct me towards an episode where maybe you talked about six O's or you talked about five nines auto versus manual? What about the early six sevens? And I kept thinking back to times that I would ask that question and it could be going back to when, you know, I was younger and I'd ask, you know, my dad something and he bled Ford blue. So anytime I brought up <laughs> GM or Ram, it's like, Oh, I don't want the thing leaking oil in my driveway. I'm like, you have a seven three. Yeah. That thing looks oil anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It leaves but, spots everywhere it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't want to be that guy that's like, 
no, you need to do this one, but there is a lot to, to think about. So like when you're looking at them and you focus in on the third gen, were you set on an auto? Did you want manual? Um, did you want a truck that was maybe modified or one that was bone stock? What were you looking for? So I think, I think initially at first, after I got bit with the bug and you know, you just sit there on your phone and you're watching sled pulling videos and you're like, crap, it's two o'clock in the morning. I got to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that type of deal. I was like, I was looking around at like, like fairly modified, you know, um, like Rams and stuff like that, uh, Cummins and everything. And the more into my professional work, uh, work that I do, I was like, all right, well, I just want something. I just want that reliability. Like, I don't want to mess with anything. You know, I don't want to like, I want to put fuel in it, get the filters and oil changed and just like, just keep going, like keep chugging along and not have to worry about, you know, this failure, this failure, this failure. Like if I yeah. boost this up, this is going to happen, <laughs> you know, and that all comes into to play, especially with like everybody talks about Dodge's transmissions, you know? And um, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't even want to like, even like go down that road, but yeah, that's, that's at first I was looking to in, in still like, I, I, I know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to want, I'm going to say more pulling power. Yep. Like I'm going to want a little bit more. Um, Cause I do come from a background of like enjoying fast cars and stuff like that. And uh, when I was younger, I was building some pretty cool turbo cars and everything. Um, so that performance aspect is always like embedded in my veins. Like, so, I, know, I know exactly like, how it's going to start. You're going to get used to the power, yeah. then you're going to get a tuner for it or have it custom mm -hmm. tuned. And then something's going to happen with the transmission. And then you're going to go, okay, do I just want to fix it back to where yeah. it was if I'm spending this? Or am I going to invest a bit more? Do I want 700 horsepower or do I want something built mm -hmm. for a thousand? And then you're going to get that. And then you're going to think, well, yeah. why am I throwing 450, 500 horse at something that can handle 750 at that, or a thousand or more? And then it starts yeah, the turbo exactly. injectors, but it's, I think it's yeah. totally different. <clears throat> like if you buy it knowing you are probably going to do that and you can plan for it versus you just buy something and it happens and now you're looking at four to 7,000 for a transmission and all these things, that's yeah. where it can quickly kind of sneak up on people. So I think knowing, Hey, I'm probably going to do this. You can, you know, you can baby it, um, you know, maintain it. And then when you're ready, then do that transmission, then do those upgrades that you want. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think that's, that is the plan now is like, I'm going to use it for work purposes. And of course I, I can't like, like you said, there's just a, just a little bit of stuff. Like I want to do to it work, work rig wise, you know? And then um later down the road, just get something else and probably turn it into a complete monster. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I was looking at like already built trucks at one point in time. And, um, and it's funny also, something that also throws you off is like, when you go to buy these, like when you, when you go to like, look at the listings on these trucks and people are like, I'll trade for like a gas truck or something like that. I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, what is, what's going on here? What is so bad? Like, <laughs> well, the thing, that, with uh, it, the thing with it too, is like, I know that there's some really well-built, well-maintained modified trucks out there. Yes. And there's also ones that aren't, and it can be so tough, especially your new, um, you know, this is going to be the first one. You got to weigh the risk. Um, I did an episode with yeah. Alligator Performance years ago, and one of the guys there was telling me about buying a used one, and he thought it was perfect, and he basically had to go in and redo the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you hear stories like that, or there's other guys where they have every maintenance, every invoice they ever did. They can tell you the exact mileage that everything has on it, and it's just like, it's really tough to find those, though. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, it, it's mostly, man, especially the years that like we're looking in. It's like, and around this area, it's some somebody kept it nice, and uh, a younger guy bought it. I'm not saying all younger kids, just you know, but and they're like, you know, I'm gonna do everything myself. I was the same way, so I can't like blame them. Like I'd be doing, I might be the same way. I might get it and be like, oh, I can do that, knowing I can't, can't do that, and um. They are like, oh my gosh, there's just wires coming out of everywhere. And 
you know, I get real weary. I'm like, uh, it's a nice truck, but I think you like, I think you dug into it a little bit too much than I would. <laughs> I would prefer to hand you all this money for that yes. and have to do that. Exactly. Like get it and just like, be like, wow, I made a mistake. Like, yep. like, you said you looked at about 20 of them. What were some of the things that you saw okay. that either stood out as I need to avoid this truck or ones that really interested you? So I think I must have sent you every diesel of every generation under the sun, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I was looking at, okay, for, I'll just go down a list for like, um, I'll start with Chevy's for, um, for, for Duramax, I was, uh, I was, of course, LBZs, everybody, you know, you hear LBZ, this and that. And uh, LLY, wait, no, I stay away from the LLYs. I don't know why now. It's not popping up in my head. Um, Is it the LB7 you were looking at? Oh, L- thank you. LB7, yeah, the yeah. LB7. It was one of those two, I was saying, but we were, I was really looking at the uh, LBZs. And then, um, man, just really like the LML sounded like you could literally get like a upgraded CP4 bump and like, that, that's it like it's good to go like if you just do that that truck like transmission is not going to go on you know like this isn't going to go this is you know so and then you know they talk about like uh how uh, with the independent uh axle set it's not solid axle so like sometimes they like snap in like they do the the chevy thing but like yeah. i'm like what am i ever going to be pulling that i'm gonna it, like i'm in trouble if i just snap those things i don't know if they just do that on the regular, just like driving down the road. But, you know, um, so I was really, really looking at the LML, uh, LML. And, um, and then for Fords, I, I, I don't know. I do have like a little, there's a piece of me that just likes, like, likes Fords a lot. Like, <laughs> like of course the seven, three, I love the six Oh two, but I just can't like, I can't dive into all that. Um, I know some people have it down to, to a science, you know, it's yeah. like, I, I figured the trustworthy after that, we actually have a dude up the road here that has some pretty impressive six O's that I would feel completely comfortable with, uh, taking to them. Um, and of course the six sevens are unbelievable, but, um, or later years, six sevens, but, um, but the six O's, what, what made me stay where it's just all the stories, what made me stay away from them? Um, I don't. I, I didn't go near six fours, unless I was like building like unless I had the money dedicated to build like a race truck. That would be fun, you know. But as far as like a well balanced all around, you know, like this thing has to work. This thing's gonna drive my family around. Like if I want to go get a coffee, I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna go get a co- you know like sort of deal. And uh, I just I. From a lot of information, I just stayed away from the the six fours. Um, they look nice. I like them a lot. I do really awesome truck. (laughs) Oh my goodness, yeah. Especially like it's so funny. Just like uh, just you could have like a grandpa looking six four truck with a cap, and somebody takes that off and just throws like wheels and tires on it. Like, oh my gosh, it's like best looking truck ever. Yeah, (laughs) but. Unfortunately, I just, I, I don't have the, uh, um, I'm not brave enough to tread that path right now, but, um, yeah, it was, um, it was that, it was the, um, it was with the, with the Duramaxes, it was the pumps or the lifts, sorry, that, um, that steered me away from them. Um, even though that seems like a simple fix and, and then, um, yeah, as far, as far as the Fords, like, I just feel like, I feel like they're built real well. Um, but to find a nice seven, three around my area, like is kind of hard and you can find nice six O's. Like I, I've, I found a really nice one that I probably should have jumped on and I just, I missed the, the train there and somebody else grabbed it or I would have probably ended up with that. Um, but and the six sevens are just like I just don't feel like paying that much money for for uh 
for something like that right now. Yeah, you know, they, it's just they get up there. That that's the balancing yeah. act too. Is do you want to spend yeah. more on the initial purchase of the truck, or do you want to spend more on the upgrades? And I know some of them you had sent me. I think I remember seeing a Duramax. I remember a six O. And then it sent over some five nines and like some early six sevens. And yeah. it's, it's really kind of tough because like I said before, like, I didn't want to say, get this one. Like, this is one you have to have, mm-hmm. but I know when you were thinking of a five, nine, I, I know you're going to do something to it. Now I'm not saying it's going to be like a 2000 horsepower truck, but you're going to want to do things to it. And it's like Dodge has this, and I think even still this reputation of great engine, bad transmission. Yeah. And like with a Duramax, great engine, great transmission. I don't think they necessarily have a ton of issues with their suspension when it's like stock power and things like that. But that reputation of the Cummins engine is so influential in the marketplace that we'll overlook, even myself, I'll overlook the transmission issues and I'll just mentally prepare four to seven. Yeah, there's going to be a transmission I buy, but I'm buying it for the engine. And I think we had chatted a little bit about the early six sevens and kind of some of the later ones and how upgrades are going to be vastly different than those five nines. And in my mind, that was a thing that, you know, right now, if I was in the market would hold me back a bit from a, a six, seven Cummins or really any of the newer ones is I think if I wanted just a truck with, you know, 50, 75, maybe hundred, hundred horsepower over, I'm just going to drive it every day. Great. But if I think I want to build something, making a bit more power might want to have more fun with like what better platform is there than, you know, an 03 to 0759, either auto or manual. And they're so hard to find. Like I'm sure you, you came across it is it's hard to find the right truck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just, just to either with the setup you want, you know, I wasn't sure if you're looking for a regular cab or like, you know, the quad cabs, I'm sure four wheel drive, but just it's tough to find them out there. Yeah, it is. And I, I've, I've run into, uh, of course, some complete rust buckets. Um, and then you, you run into ones like good body, but like you're, it's, it's, you, you do the old, you know, blow by cap tests and it's like shooting the cap up to the hood and you're like, <laughs> not even doing that. I want to drive it a little bit before I have to like <laughs> do anything to it. And, uh, I don't know. It's just something about that platform that just like, it, it, um, it draws something very familiar with me. Like when I, when I see that inline six set in there, it's, it's as thrilling for me as if I looked at like back in the day when I saw like a four G six, three and an Evo, like it's just that, that red top with the, you know, or, um, but it, it gives me that same, like when I see that motor, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like that's, that thing's solid, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure there's people like that with the six O and the Duramax and the Power Stroke and you know, where they see that and they just like they they get it, they understand it. You know, and that that was another thing. It was like if I have to work on something too, like just coming in, like like I want to be able to do things too, you know. I want to be one of those people I was talking about that get in there and don't know what they're doing and mess something up and then have to take it to the cap. <laughs> but I like, I don't want to be able to, 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 to do some upgrades or like if I have to fix something or if something happens, like I can get in there. And that, that was something that worried me too with the other two platforms. It's like, you know, and I honestly think from having that gas third gen and like repairing the front end and like, fixing it and everything like it's not something that's so foreign to me now body wise suspension wise you know it doesn't like it doesn't worry me and another thing that i was so weird on is like i just got to get in it's got to be 100 percent reliable and this and that like i i'm just i'm now changing bottom end bearings on the five seven you know um and everything like that so it's like pick something what i've learned for real it's like pick something that you like really that draws you whatever like give yourself like the four second rule like if you could have like like four seconds what would i want and that's probably what you're probably going to (laughs) go pretty much going to go with and i finally found something to where I, i came to like an agreement with myself to where like i finally came to a spot where i was like 
what what is good like i'm not going to get a complete piece of junk like what is a good solid truck for this price range and that like i'm comfortable and willing to like repair and put money into yeah. if need be and that's what like i finally found out i was like okay this this uh this this truck that i just recently looked at that i was finally that i sent you i was like <laughs> dude, I found it like this is it like keep everything runs great like um I, I was like, okay, this this is a truck that I could see that I could um, justify putting money into, you know. So, yeah, that that was a big thing is like find something that's that you can fix because you're gonna have to fix anything anyway. Because I know that that that's something that scared me going into it was like, oh yeah, gas versus diesel and prices with with uh with like repairs and stuff like that. And the internet will, the internet will mess with your head like crazy. So find some credible resources <laughs> like yourself and everything that you could be like, Hey, I don't want to mess up. Like, where do I go from here? You know, yeah, that's, that's uh, something that's really cool is all the resources that are there for diesel trucks. Like it's a small community, but there, there's a lot of passion in it, whether it's mm -hmm. podcasts, YouTube, um, I mean, even old write-ups on forums that people were doing <clears throat> with repairs and stuff, you can still find that that information, you know, helps a ton. And I think there's a lot of people that are in the same exact boat that you are. And that's what was so cool. And I thought, why don't we do an episode about this? Um, because you're on a journey, like you got interested by this particular internal combustion engine and you had all these choices in front of you. And you narrowed it down and then you came to that that rule, you know, that or that guideline of, hey, if I find this, it's going to, you know, the, that'll meet my goal. So with this one that you found, you know, when you said I was excited for you because I know you've been looking for a while, what, what things did the truck have that, that you definitely wanted and what were maybe some compromises or things, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm going to need to address this or work on this. Um, like what were the pros and cons of the one that you went with? So, um, pros was definitely price. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm picking this thing up for 11,000 and um, this truck, literally I see it going for, you know, 16, 17, 18. If someone really wants to get ready for 20, um, you know, how it's uh, so like you said about um, like DEF and everything like that, pre DEF uh, EPA is not cracking down so much on, on this one, you know, which is a whole another story, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was a price on this one, the shape, the shape of the body and everything. It, uh, well, I guess I should, it's 2004 Ram 2500, pretty much what I thought I was going to end up with anyway, but I, I had to bug you guys with <laughs> a million other questions. A million other that was ones all right. Decisive. Wait, <laughs> and, um, put my Ford hat on one day, put my Ram hat on the next day, you know? <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, I, the body's in relatively great shape. Um, of course, third gen bed rust, you know, which I wasn't, which I wasn't too worried about. Um, I got it up to like temperature drove it for a while. I was on it for a little bit, wanted to make sure I got the trade. Everything I'm saying too, like I've learned from this podcast, <laughs> like, Get that temperature up because it'll even like transmissions will feel great when cold and slip like crazy when they're warm, you know, and on some occasions. So like, I like, I was just like going through everything in my mind that I've listened to off of here. And it's like, yeah, I'm getting this, I'm getting this transmission warm. Like I'm getting this thing up the, the temperature, like I'm going to drive it for a little bit. And she was like, okay, you know, so, uh, did it like, no, no blow by not even a push or anything like transmission wasn't slipping sounds great um it needs um uh, some sort of valve i don't even know now wastegate valve um and i was yeah I, I honestly the cons i don't know if like i i'm gonna definitely they pulled horse trailers with it so i'm just the cons is i'm gonna wait for the transmission um especially because I have a list I made 
uh, from Fleece. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Of course, I went on their website. I was like, is this this, you know, Um, just a little bit, you know, but uh, so that and just. I don't think it affected the. uh, The valve that valve is not affecting the. uh, Like MPG too much at all. I don't think. Um, Well, there's tons of fixes for it too. You know, and that's one of the things this came from a personal experience years ago is I was looking for an 03 to 0759 and I found this 05, which between the two styles with the front ends and and stuff, I like the 03 to 05s more. And I love Mm -hmm. that dark gray metallic and it was a Laramie and it was an auto. It didn't have many miles on it at all. The paint was perfect. There were no scratches, no dents. And I went and looked at it and I started it up and I thought, man, this thing, this is really clean. Like you just can't find these. And I let it get up to temperature and I drove it around the block and the turbo is just screaming. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, that's not normal. And then, you know, start to loosen the, the oil cap and that thing starts bouncing around, jumping all over the place. And I'm like, I see why it's for sale. And it's like, so I, I try to tell people, you know, get it up to temp. A lot of the guests have that I've talked to um, just to be able to see. And I think like, when you sent me that truck and I looked at it, I'm like, this is the perfect platform. There's, you know, things you can do, like you've mentioned before, it is relatively, it's easier than other engines to work on. The aftermarket out there is insane for these trucks. And then you can make it look however you want, um, you know, lift wheels, tires, or whatever you're going to do to it. You have tons of options. It's just getting that truck that you can enjoy for a little bit and then planning on it. But the transmission, like you said, every Dodge guy plans for a transmission. It's just like, yeah. We know it going in. We're going to have to do it, you know, at some point, whether we force it or whether it's just, you know, tons of mileage and, and uh, towing. So I think it's going to be the right truck with all the questions you asked, the different ones that you had sent us. That was the one I had hoped you would get, one of those 03 to 07s. And you did. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the info and everything. Yeah, it's one of those things like I can help guide you. I can't tell you. <laughs> like, I don't- I know what I want you to get, but but you got to know what you want you to get. And I, you know, I, I'll tell you, I like like I said, I sent you tons of trucks. I looked at a lot, and for anybody who's like out there, like like you said, in the same position, and we're, you like it sounds weird, but you'll know. Like the diesel universe will pull you in to the right truck, and you'll yep. you'll know because as soon as I. I stopped and I got out and I looked at it and I drove and everything. I was like, this is this, like, no question. Like, this isn't one. I was like, I don't even care if this transmission breaks right now. I'm going to get this truck. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the one. It's, it, it's what, because before that, I was looking at that second gen and um, I, mean, I was like, VP or common row, which one? Yep. Like, <laughs> and, and, like and I kind of knew what I wanted, but I just, some reassurance on it and i appreciate all that but yeah this this thing is um yeah like i said i already have my um my fleece list written down um for it and what i want to do when the transmission goes so but yeah it's a great i you can't i don't know you can't beat them you can't beat a lot of them if you know do something you're comfortable with too yeah. Like I said, I, I think that helps because I was already comfortable with everything else around that that platform, like suspension wise, body wise, like all that. Like I know my way around it. Um, I fixed it enough times, so I was like, I might as well just fix this with a diesel in it. So, well, I think I think that's the best advice anyone could get. Is like you, you're right. You do know when you see it, and that's why I'll get tons of questions, or I'll see them like, "What's the best truck to buy?" I can't tell you. Like, you know, I might personally think one year range is the best, but there's a ton of guests we've had on that, you know, they love their six liters. They're reliable. They make good power or somebody with a six, four or somebody with a six, seven, um, either Cummins or power stroke or LBZs or their LML. And I never wanted to be that guy. That's like, it's this truck or no truck because we, we all have our preferences and it's just trying to help educate or just ask questions, you know? So um, when people are out there shopping or the next phase you're about to enter is the ownership upgrade phase of it and what you want to do. So that's going to yeah. be, what turbo do I want? 
what injectors, what, what am I going to do with the injection pump? Um, what am I going to do with the valve train? Transmission question, you're going to have a ton of those with converters, clutch material, bands, which billet shafts. And so it's like this lifestyle of, of truck ownership, which is so cool. And somebody mentioned on a podcast the last couple months, and I'm like, I never thought about it like that. Like it starts where we're interested, then we get one, yeah. then you enter a new phase of I'm going to do these upgrades. And then that even progresses into, do I want a race truck? Do I want 2,500 horsepower? Or do I want this to be my daily driver? <laughs> it's comfortable. Do I want a second yeah. truck? So it's a really fascinating journey. And I'm looking forward to seeing you go on that with this truck. So definitely make sure and keep us updated with, you know, what you're doing with it. Or if you have questions or I, I, I probably won't have the answers, but if I can say, Hey, call these guys, you know, here's a couple places to call. Um, you know, definitely use the resources and I look forward to seeing where you take it. I know you've been looking for a long time. You're passionate about it. You've wanted it. I think you got a great platform to do it with. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And like I said, like now, now that this, this phase is over, I mean, even, even if anybody goes through this and they're like, okay, I finally found the truck. You can literally, um, go on the podcast and scroll down it or search and you can usually find um, some episode that you did that has a ton of information on it. Um, just like I even have, I even have transmission stuff picked out from a gentleman that was on it. It's the one who, um, oh, I can't think of the company, but he does, uh, he has the BMW. Oh, um, Sancher. Sancher was, performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was an amazing um, podcast with him too and his parts. So yeah, there's just ton, like you said, tons of information. A lot of a lot of information is like right here. Yeah. So that's 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 what I thought. That was the easiest. And don't because you can get on um Facebook groups are great, but don't be discouraged when everybody puts all the bad stuff on the Facebook groups because they're just reaching out. Like yeah. when something's going right, you really don't like no one, no one's making a post that day. Like, Hey, my truck has been running great for five years straight with no problems. You know, yeah. like it's never that, like you never hear that. It's just like, my truck broke down three times this week. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm just staying with gas. I'm not getting, but here's a gas truck breaking down three times that week. It's, you know, it's all the, like I said, no one gets on there and post how great their truck's been for the last decade, but what they'll get on. And that's what that's for. And people reach out and that's good that there's help there. So don't get discouraged at Facebook groups or yeah. people wanting to trick. Yeah. And just filtering the information. I think a lot of the shop owners yeah. and companies that I've chatted with, they say that like call us or call our competitors even Yeah, like there's so many things with trans, especially transmissions. Like I love them. I yeah. love talking about them, but they are so complex and yeah. there's so much to absorb. And like that episode with Santa performance, it opened my eyes because that was the biggest issue was how do you make a 48 RE input shaft last when you start cranking a lot of power through it? Well, here's a solution. Like, you know, and there's a lot of transmission builders that'll use those parts. And then what stall do I want on the converter or what kind of turbo do you want? You know, depending where you live, the elevation, what you're towing, there's a million questions. So I think that's really great advice is just to filter through it and really ask people that this is what they do. Whether it's a shop owner, you call a big company, medium sized, small company, you know, and then just make the best decision, for, you know, for your truck, the budget, you know, everything else. So I think it, it, it was really cool to see. And I'm really excited to be able to personally see how you grow with this truck. Cause I remember the very beginning of him hey, looking at these trucks. What do you think of this one? Now you've got one and just that next phase is going to be so exciting to see where you take it, what you do with it. And then when you start hitting different milestones or you tell me, Hey, Man, I thought I'd be happy with 600 horsepower and I'm bored with it. Like what's the next step? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to tow this trailer a lot faster. So <laughs> just kidding. Don't do that. Everyone. Well, awesome. Awesome. Larry. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Like I said, keep me updated to keep us updated. I think you gave us a lot of really cool insights from the buying perspective, enthusiast perspective of what should we look for. And this was a cool episode you know, to do is just, it's my favorite part is just chatting about trucks and the journey and takes me back to the beginning too. And, uh, you know, mistakes I made in trucks that I bought and I you know, could have wish I would have redone or things guests and shops have told me where I'm like, man, I need to make sure people, you know, know to look for this or if you're looking at that truck, you know, pay attention to that. So they, you know, I want them to find value in the information that the guests are talking about and be happy with their purchase. So 
man, I'm pumped to see what you do with this 04 and, you know, see some pictures here and, you know, maybe some dino graphs one day and some uh, time slips oh, for yeah. the drag strip and everything. So <laughs> that would be awesome. No, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, absolutely. And just like, yeah, thank you and everyone else who came before and put in all that work and got it down to a science so that I could come in and ask questions and benefit from everybody's backbone and hard work, <laughs> you know? So I'm just like telling, like, I think it's so hard to like pick one, but it's, it's actually relatively easy, you know, cause I wasn't like elbow deep in it. So no, nah, thank you guys very much and putting in the work and answering all my questions and yeah, diesel community is awesome. So don't forget, diesel fans, make sure and head on over to kershaw.kaiusa.com. Use code 23diesel20 for 20% off site-wide. If you're in the market for a knife for EDC, hunting, fishing, um, the outdoors, around the house, job site, they've got a ton of choices um, to be able to get a quality knife to meet any budget. Uh, 2023 has been a huge year for Kershaw Knives with new products and innovation. And one of their newer releases is the Duralock models, which it has a, a really smooth opening closing mechanism. Um, it's almost effortless the way to do it. And it keeps your fingers away from the blade when you're opening and closing it. They've got a blade that's made out of D2 steel. And then there's also different choices for blade length, design, um, handle design, texture. Um, so if you're in the market, it's definitely a great choice. Head on over, check them out and use code 23diesel20 for 20% off site wide. I also want to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters, Tyler Lowen of 23 Diesel, uh, Jay Cole, John, all of our other Patreons, all of you who subscribe on YouTube podcast apps or on our Discord channel. Um, follow us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. We pr- appreciate all your support helping make us the largest diesel podcast um, in North America. And we really take um, a lot of pride in the trust you put into us to be able to deliver the content, the guests, and the information um, that you want. We're very humbled by it. So we look forward to bringing you more of the content that you guys want to hear in 2023. Until next time, keep the shiny side up.